this was one, two, three, and four? I began by just telling you about the kingdom of the plants. It's pretty obvious now. When you when you first look at plants, you guys figure some have veins inside and some don't. Your mosses don't have veins, but they're never big either. So when you first look at the plants, you can divide them in two groups. With veins, those are called vascular. Without veins, they call it non-vascular. Now, what do you reckon is more of? Vascular with veins or non-vascular in the world? With veins. With veins. So if you take the vascular, you go right on. Hmm. There's two kinds of those based on how they reproduce. Sometimes a plant produces seeds, black eyed peas, things like that. And sometimes they don't produce seeds. That pine tree out there makes a seed, but it's in a cone. An apple makes a seed and a fruit. And now, if you come back thing right here, a, a fern makes fern and eggs. And you always thought fern was the animal thing. But a fern actually does two things. What you can't see on the ground is called a prothallus. It's about it's this long a dime. And it's green, it's like a little heart shape. And on the bottom of the prothallus, there's little roots. And then up near the notch of the heart, there's called the archegonia. Don't take those. That's where the, the egg is going to be found. And down at the end of the heart, down here, is called the antheridia, with the sperm on it. Now, he can't produce his own, but next to him doesn't know. So his sperm will swim on the ground to the next sperm. That's why ferns live in swampy areas. You don't find ferns in the desert because they got to have the water to produce, right? So the sperm swims to the next sperm, goes under it, fertilizes the egg. And then out comes what you know as a fern, the pretty leaves. Now, on that, on those fern leaves and under them, you find little little brown dots sometimes. Those are the spores that's going to fall to the ground and grow into very new little dime-shaped prothalluses. So a fern actually does everything you can do. It makes sperm, it makes eggs for one part of a life cycle, and then it makes spores for the other part of the life cycle. But then again, because of the swimming aspect, ferns are confined to low-lying areas, where there's wet areas, where there's water areas. You know, I find a fern growing a driveway. You know, not my find growing beside a dusty road. Now, if you have a fern in your house, you have to keep it moist all the time. But I have seen. I went to a church party one time with a person that had pretty ferns outside, and uh, I said, "Oh man, this pretty ferns." She said, "Yeah, I think they're all dying. They're white. They all got little black things under them." I said. Oh, don't throw this away. This is part of the life cycle. This thing is healthy. He thought those were like rust and mold. They were going to throw them out and start over again. I said, don't you dare. There's nothing wrong with your fern. I say, when they first bought the fern, it was pretty green on both sides of the leaf. And then as the thing progressed, the little brown dots came up, which is part of his life cycle. She goes, well, I'm sure glad you told me that. I was going to throw them away and start over again. I said, be throwing away all your life because that's how you do the lifestyle so that's number two so um it, it is trying to do something similar but i'll get the other one now if you make a seed if you make a seed either you will put your seed in a cone like a like a pine does or a cedar does or we call you a gymnosperm gymnos means enclosed in latin but if you're going to use a flower to make your seed, then we call you an angiosperm. And there are tons of angiosperms in the world. Daisies, lilies, apple trees, maple trees, uh, pine trees. If you have those pine needles, like needles like, like cedar has, you're gymnosperm. If you've got the broad leaves like oak, hickory, maple, then you're an angiosperm. If you make flowers, Daisy, daylily, orchid, geranium, then you're a gymnosperm. Now, I mean, the angiosperm, there's two kinds of those, though. And that's based on how many baby seed, how many baby leaves are in your seed. Yeah. You eat a black-eyed pea, okay? 
There's two little seeds in that. There's two little leaves in that seed that we call embryonic. They're going to actually grow up and boom and, be, and sprout for you. But those two little seeds, those two little leaves, those are called cotyledons. And because you have two of them, we call you a dicotyledon. Short dicot. If you only have one little leaf in there, that's a monocotyledon. And we call you a monocot. Now, if you're a dicot, you have a big, thick root like a carrot. That's a tap root. But if you're a monocot, like corn, you have a bunch of little roots all over the place. Your grasses, well, all that, just all roots, that's a monocot. The weed you grow is you pull, try to pull out the grass. Those are harder too. After rain, the trees you get them out though. But sometimes you pull a, 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 a root up, there's a long old thing going down. That would be a dicot. Sometimes you pull up, there's a mass of roots. That'd be a monocot. They both make flowers. But our, the things we eat around here, by far and away, we consume more monocot kind of things than dicot kind of things. Corn, corn, your wheat, your rice, our main staples are all monocots. Tomatoes, fruit or vegetable. Argument goes on forever. Who came first, chicken or the egg? Who cares? Who cares? Um, I know back in when, all, when it first started happening, New York City put a tariff on fruit being sent in our country. So someone got smart and says, we're going to call these tomatoes a vegetable and beat that tariff. That's how it all started. Oh, yeah. It was all because of money. Um, and that might be a homework question one day, y'all. Just what is a tomato? Is it technically a fruit or is it a vegetable? And that's going to be, I'm going to tell you the answer because I'm not going to throw it at you one day. All right? So anyway, the whole lab is about monocot and dicot. Those are both, they both make flowers. And I took a lot of time to put it together. And I even found, I even made a nice little table for you to compare the monos and the dicot. Now if you read this thing, now, I found a picture, I went looking for it, there's a picture in your text, almost just like this picture. It is so close, it's frightening. I'm going to tell you where it is now. Because in college, you're going to find things you say. Now, your textbook is how many pages? Now, not lab book, textbook. Different. There's only what, like a thousand something pages? Yeah. You're trying to page one, start looking. Or you can use back the book and look at and start looking up words and find out where they're at. But, but I found this picture I did not find in your lab book. I looked at first. I went, I look at how much it works. So I, I took my I took my book and I used the index of my intelligence and I found this picture. And I was so glad it is this one. Now what I did also is that when I wrote my treatise, I had my picture beside me. Now if you look at the first one, and I don't know where it is, but see where it says, label the dicot, monocot, cotyledons? Okay. And I say, color it two, and I say, A, look at my picture. A is the cotyledon. I'm giving you the answer. You ain't got to look at that. I'll give it to you. And then if you want extra credit, then you got to color it the color I tell you to. Not one your side is prettier than mine. Okay. The next one says, discusses seed coats. They're on both seeds. So you find it color yellow. Now look on my picture. B. Every time you see a B, that's a seed coat. Every time. So I'm giving you the answers. This is the seed covering. That would be the seed cover. Oh, okay. That's the seed cover. Now, you see what's being pulled out? Look at that third picture over there. That's being pulled out. This one? And the one right here. One right here. The third one. It's just, just, just come out of the ground. Okay. It just come out of the ground. That thing right there looks like a pair of, like a behind. What that dot is? You see what F is? Uh-huh. Okay, see that 
Is there any kind of air? It looks like someone's butt from the side. Okay. Like you bent over. Okay. That's being pulled up by the ground. That's going to sprout. Bing! That's going to be your brand new leaf. Your brand new plant. You see how it sprouts up there? Mm -hmm. Now, you see A over here on the last picture? Those are still there. Those are the embryo leaves. But look at G. Those are leaves you recognize. Now there's an area below the embryo leaf that I call FF. An area below it I call FF, but look at the FFs. They're different letters. Mm -hmm. Now go back to my reading. If you look on page two. And look on page two. I would say fourth fourth paragraph. The region of the shoot beneath the dicotyledon is called the hypocotyl. And I call that big F, small F. I'll label it for you. And then the next one says the region above the shoot is called the epicotyl. And I label that one big F, big F. So we just have to put the words there. Right. I had to put the words on there. I want the words to go on my picture. You haven't got to look to where the word, you know, if you know where A is, that's the word. So I try to make it simple that way for you. Okay. Now, Everything, now see where it says adult monocot on my writing? Mm -hmm. Now, from that point on, it's a, little, it's a little easier. That's about that last picture, basically. Okay, now, the first three pages are just teaching material, just teaching. Mm -hmm. Now, look at page four. That's the first page that you're going to give me. The name's at the top of it. And what I would do if I was you, I do mine front to back. That was a mistake probably. If you do yours in six pages, tear off your first three over here, take your other three over here, side by side, and work. On mine, my mistake was, there's my page three, and there's my page four. So I can't do what I recommend to y'all. And what you're gonna give me, before next lab, it's just pages four, five, and six. You're going to use one, two, and three to fill them out. And so as far as I'm concerned, unless you're going to do some coloring, and we're done right now in the lab. The lab you know what to do, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Now, you can sit there and do it. I'm going to do some work myself in here. Or you can take it home and do it with a cup of coffee. I don't care. But when it comes back on next lab on Wednesday, when lab starts, I'm it'll this. be ready. I say Wednesday was what? It's Thursday. Well, you know what? The next <laughs> lab, whenever it is, I want this thing turned in within a few minutes of the lab start. I don't want you to take, don't give me the 50, I think you did in the lab. I want the stuff done before lab starts, and while you walk in, just here it is, and go sit down. Here it is, go sit down. I have a folder up here, and when I put my folder up, I'm taking no more labs. So when you walk in that door, your first priority is, Get this thing in his folder. If you get here late, I know it's you. Okay. But I, I, we, we've been dealing with her and another professor. Everybody, nobody else has her permission to come in late. So be sure you watch out for that. I don't think you email it to me. I don't, I don't, it'd be too much trouble. I could do it, but it could be too much trouble. Just write the answer right on there. If you want her color, good. Just be sure and use the colors I think. <laughs> When I look down by mine, I'll be going, well, mine If you use the green. wrong color, you, you I use mine as a key based on your color. If you use the wrong color, you get a point taken off? extra credit, I'm going to give it to you. Oh, okay. I won't mark anything off. <laughs> you won't get the extra help. Okay. Any other questions? <laughs> You're planning right on going wild. Well. <laughs> if you have a question, email me. Okay. If it's a good question, I'll announce it to everybody. Says, and I'll say, hey, one had a good question. Here's a question. Here's my answer. So. You'll be able to share also. Mm -hmm. so, but if I get some questions, just one on one, I'll help share. So, if your question is why I didn't cover it, I go, they didn't hear it. I'm like, mm -hmm. I even tell the person who asked me to give credit for a good question. <laughs>